You know, after the signing of the November 10th trilateral statement, we had to ponder about our future steps, because November 10th was also a point in time, and I could not say exactly on November 8th how the war would end. I could not say with complete certainty, of course. I knew that it would result in our victory. But it was impossible to say on November 8th how and when that would be the case, because on November 8th, of course, a major event happened Shusha was liberated from occupation, and the resistance of separatists became meaningless from a strategic point of view. Of course, had the war continued, it would have been very difficult to liberate the Kalbajar and Lachin districts, especially in the winter season. However, we would have done that too, but our losses could have been extremely high, even higher than in the 44-day war. We all knew that well, because even now, anyone visiting those regions can see how challenging the terrain is. However, if Armenia had not signed the act of capitulation, we would have continued the war until the end. Therefore, after November 8th, the next day, from morning to evening, until night, was dedicated to talks between Azerbaijan and Armenia through the President of Russia. I think that the adoption of the trilateral statement, its adoption, under those conditions, was an enormous political success for us. Of course, if Shusha had not been liberated from the occupation, we could not have included those conditions in that statement. In other words, our victory and our strength allowed us the opportunity to introduce conditions that were not related to this issue, especially regarding the Zangizor corridor. However, a certain vacuum emerged after November 10th. No one knew what would happen next. The co-chairs of the Minsk group, who were still there at the time, had no clue as to what to do next. There were some visits. The situation in Armenia was, of course, ambiguous. The people of Azerbaijan were celebrating. But I knew that this was not the end of the matter, because there are a number of unfinished issues, and they had to be clarified. First of all, the issue related to former Lachin Corridor. After a certain period, especially when we saw that Armenia was sending weapons and mines to Karabakh, and carrying out rotation of military units through this road, we started to raise the issue that we should exercise control over it. Unfortunately, the Russian side did not take a positive approach to that at the time. However, we continued our efforts. I can say for sure that we appealed to the Russian side at the highest level for a long time, five times, urging them to let us control this road together, because it turned out that you that they did not have full control over it. As you probably remember, the manufacture date of the mines that were discovered there also raised a lot of questions. How could the mines produced in Armenia in 2021 have been brought there? In other words, these mines were brought through that Lachin Konkendi road. This was why we raised the issue let's stand at a joint checkpoint together and boost oversight at the same time. The critical approach to the Russian peacekeeping forces would also subside because we will share the responsibility with you. Unfortunately, the suggestion was not accepted. Finally, on April 23rd, we had no choice and were not going to wait any longer. We settled on the bridge over the Hakari River in a matter of a few hours. Of course, preparations had been made, and despite all the efforts, we did not move anywhere from there. So, it became no longer possible to illegally transport weapons, ammunition, mines and manpower to Karabakh. Nevertheless, we did not create any obstacles to humanitarian movements. We all remember very well that patients were evacuated and transported under the auspices of the Red Cross. After some time, the Armenians living in Karabakh started to use that road and experienced no problems at all. Their cars were simply inspected. They traveled in their own cars. The Azerbaijani border guards were very attentive and were instructed to treat civilians with respect. However, military provocation was committed after that. Our post came under fire. And, of course, we shut down the road temporarily to conduct an investigation, but then reopened it. You probably remember what happened after that. So, I don't want to say too much about it. The leftovers of the Armenian state and some local separatists actually deprive themselves of humanitarian aid. In other words, the events of April 23 are very important. At that time, and after that, I said that our territorial integrity was fully restored on April 23rd. We began to control all the borders, and once again showed that we were the owners of these lands. Until April 23rd, we demonstrated several times to Armenia and local separatists that this is our land. The Operation Farouk, Operation Saribaba Gurk Giz, Operation Revenge were all critical military operations we carried out. As a result of these operations, the strategic hills and heights of the Karabakh region, which were not under our control at the time, were regained. And this was of great importance in the September 1920th operation. So, those operations were not spontaneous. They were goal-oriented, because during the war, especially if we consider our terrain, the main issue is about who controls the heights, and the main reason for the fact that the September 1920th operation was completed in a short period of time is precisely the operations I mentioned above, and, of course, 
the control of the Azerbaijan-Armenia border in the direction of Lachin, because the separatists were already deprived of these opportunities to resupply. Malik olmak için o imkanlardan da mahrum edilmiştiler.